Truth in History with Charles A. Jess Jennings. As we begin our program today, I would like to invite you to uh, take your Bibles and follow along because on our subject matter today is very important for the life of a believer. Our subject today is praise and worship. Are they the same? There's been a lot of misunderstanding concerning praise and worship and the difference between those, and some have equated them together as being totally synonymous, but there is a difference in the scriptures concerning praise and worship. And we pray that this program today will be a real blessing to you and to your understanding. As we begin in the scripture today, I, I would like to invite you to turn to Revelation chapter 4, and I'm going to read between verses 9 and 11, verses 9, 10, and 11. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. We'd like to go back to the Old Testament as we begin to see some of the scriptures that are very familiar with most of us concerning praise. Now, we know that praise in the Bible is in the Old Testament is used many, many times. In fact, hundreds of times. We see a verse such as this in Psalm 29 and verse number 1. We see this. It says, Give unto the Lord, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now, as we read that verse and we hear that phrase quoted so many times, we think that the writer is talking about our holiness. The writer is not talking about our holiness. The writer of the book of Psalms, there, are, there were many writers of these Psalms, but in each case, they were talking about the holiness of God, the purity of God, because holiness is the most foremost, prominent attribute of the character of God Almighty, because holiness talks about his verity or his truthfulness. Holiness talks about his purity. In other words, his, his attribute that is totally, totally fair and equitable in all things. Also, he's talking about his truthfulness. He's never, never told a lie or ever will tell a lie because that's part of the holiness of God, the absolute purity of his character. Let's go to another scripture that we read in Psalm 30. Now, this is one of the Psalms of David, and in Psalm 30 and verse number 4, we read this. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Sing unto the Lord, and give remembrance to his holiness. The holiness of God. We're not, we, we believe in holiness of character and holiness of life for the believer. But we're not talking about the holiness of the believer in this case. We're talking about the holiness of God. And therefore, we give him praise and glory on the basis of his holiness and not ours. As we read the Bible, especially the book of Psalms, we come against or come upon many, many phrases about praise the means of praise that are found in the Bible. And these are just some of them. We praise the Lord with instruments. 
We praise the Lord with a variety of in- instruments because we read in Psalm 150, of which everyone is familiar with, it says, praise him with the instruments or the sound of the trumpet. Praise the Lord with the psaltery, the harp. Praise him with the timbrel. Praise him with the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and even organs. Praise him with loud cymbals, loud sounding cymbals, and then let everything that hath a breath. So therefore we praise the Lord with our breath. So as we read the Bible, we see different instruments or different means by which to praise the Lord. Our vocal cords, different musical instruments, clapping of our hands, lying down, a position in which we praise the Lord. Because the psalmist said, praise the Lord even upon your bed. Also, praise Him in the dance. Praise Him while you're standing up, or while you're lying down, or while you're bowing down. You can praise the Lord while you're kneeling. So these are different means, different positions by which we praise the Lord. Now, what is praise? That is what I'm trying to really get at in this lesson today. What is praise? What is the difference between between praise and worship? Praise is to set a price upon someone or something to commend the worth of that thing or that person, to express approval or admiration of, to laud the glory of a person or a thing, to extol. Now, when you praise the Lord, you ordinarily we praise the Lord in a public setting. We praise the Lord among other people. We extol the greatness of the Lord for things which he has done, for great deeds that he has performed in the past. We praise the Lord. We admire the Lord. We commend the Lord to others. That's praise. We can praise the Lord outside of his presence. We can praise the Lord and commend the Lord, extol the Lord to others anywhere in our home, in the church, in our car, at work. It doesn't matter. We're praising the Lord. We're commending the Lord to someone else for what he has done in our lives and what he has done in the scriptures. But there's a difference when it comes to worship. There's different aspects of praise, and let me go over this before we go to worship. The, the principle of worship. The different as- aspects of praise are things like this. We laud him with song, with singing. We laud or we praise. We build up his character. We commend him in song to one another. Or in, in Psalm 145, we see the aspect of celebrate. We boast. We boast in the Lord. We celebrate the Lord. We come together. It's a time of rejoicing. It's a time of hilarity. It's a a happy time for the saint of God. We also see him uh, praised with extended hands. When we extend our hands out to him, when we Praise the Lord. We raise our hands in worship and in adoration of his character. Also, a thank offering. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you have done. We can do that publicly. We can do that even in a restaurant as believers or as an individual. Before you partake of your meal, you give a thank offering unto the Lord. You bow your head. All these are scriptural means. Or to sing a hymn. You can sing in public. You can sing privately. But it's praise. It's adoration. Now, when you sing unto the Lord, when you sing unto the Lord, that's praise. 
But if someone gets up and sings a special and they sing for adoration for themselves to show off their talent or to show off their ability in music, then that is performance. There's a big difference between ministry in song and performance in song or performance in music. And therefore, that person, they have their reward right there. They need not look for a greater reward, an open uh, reward from the Lord or a reward in eternity because they got their glory right there when they performed that song. And so therefore, praise is a, is a variety of physical, uh, positions. Praise can be a variety of means publicly, publicly or privately. But when we get to worship, it goes deeper than that. When we come to the principle of worship, we come to the place where we first have to enter in into the presence of God to really worship. Now, we've all heard the phrase, call to worship. You know, the old-fashioned church, when they had the, the belfry and the bell, on top of the church, and someone would pull the rope and sound that bell. That was a call to worship for that community to come together. We've heard the term worship service. We've heard the term praise and worship team. We've heard raise your hands and worship. But all of these are generic terms that have been used concerning coming together in a congregational public form in order to worship or praise the Lord. Now, I have a brochure that I hold here in my hand because this brochure has a lot of these principles that I'm talking about today. And I would encourage you to write to the address that is on the screen or you may call the number that is on the screen and off. Uh, and ask for offer number five, offer number five, because this little brochure that I hold in my hand is small, but yet it is power-packed with a lot of information. It's concise, but yet it has a lot of good principle, a lot of good points in it to show the difference between praise and worship. And that's the title of this brochure, Praise and Worship, Are They the Same? Or you may look this brochure up on our website that is also uh, listed on the screen. Now, what is, what is worship? We've talked about praise, but what is worship? Worship goes deeper than praise. Worship goes beyond just a public laudation or a public glory concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Worship gets down into the soul. It must come out of the spirit of man. In order to have biblical worship, you must be in the presence of the one that you worship. In praise, you do not necessarily have to be in the presence of one that you praise. You could praise someone to a third party. You could say, I commend what that man is doing. I like that person. He has a lot of good qualities. Well, that person that you're talking about could be a thousand miles away. And the person that you're talking to could be many miles away. You could be talking to them either in, in person or you could be talking them to them over a telephone. But worship is different. Worship is something, it's a spirit, you, it's an attitude, it's something, it's a, it's a, it's a atmosphere that we enter into when we go into the presence of the person that we are worshiping. When we worship the Lord, true biblical worship, it is not to get. It's only to give. 
Now, in many church circles, as we have been, possibly you have been all your life, we have heard a phrase used that is really not a biblical phrase. You say, I've come to church to get a blessing. I've come to church to be a blessing. Especially, I've come to church to get a blessing. True worship, you come not to get a blessing. But in true worship, you come to bless the one that you are worshiping. You come to give every fiber of your spirit being to worship and in worship. As we turn to the New Testament, we find a phrase in the Bible in Luke chapter 1 in verse 46 and 47. And it expresses something that is very deep and sincere in the heart and the life of a believer. When Mary and Elizabeth, Mary being the, the Virgin Mary, the, the mother of our Lord, when she greeted Elizabeth and Elizabeth returned the greeting concerning the conception of the Lord Jesus and the conception of John the Baptist. Their heart were filled, their hearts were filled with deep seated worship for the Almighty. And this is what Mary said in Luke 1 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. You see, her soulish being magnified God. Her soulish being magnified the Lord. Her, what is our soul? Our soul is our emotions, our mentality, and our will. And she put every fiber of her soulish being into praise and into magnifying the Lord for what he was doing. And then she went into a deeper dimension. She went into a dimension of her spirit. And she said, My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Saints, have you only praised the Lord and never worshipped? Have you commended the Lord to others, either other saints or even sinner people, and said, you need the Lord. You need His life in you to change you, to transform your spirit, to transform you from being a sinner into a saint. You need to invite the Lord Jesus into your heart. But have you gone beyond the soulish realm of praise and have you entered into the spirit, your spirit, your human spirit, has it ever been engaged in true worship? As Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, but my spirit is now rejoicing in God my Savior. I believe that Mary and Elizabeth that, that, that day were actually in the presence of God. And therefore, Mary expresses her deepest, her deepest desire when she said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit in her reaches way deep down and says, My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. That's what I want to do. And that's what I want you. And I want to encourage you to to not only praise the Lord, but worship the Lord. And we, I see that we're going to have to go to a subsequent program to fully explain worship. But I want to remind you, I want to remind you today to call the number that is on the screen or write to the address that is on the screen and order this little brochure entitled, Praise and Worship, Are They the Same? And ask for offer number five. Just simply offer number five. I believe that this will be a real blessing to you as you read this and let the Holy Spirit 
take the words and the principles that I have la- outlined and laid down in this brochure and just let the Holy Spirit take you to a different dimension of praise, a different level, a, a depth that you've never been there before, and that is worship, worshiping the Lord. I'd like to say something about the word hallelujah. In Psalm 104, and I'm going to turn there and read a verse of Scripture. In Psalm 104, verses 33, 34, 35, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live, this psalmist is saying. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. And then he says this, Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul, praise ye the Lord. Now this, pray, this praise ye the Lord is actually hallelujah. It is actually meaning hallelujah. This is hail to Yah. Now we see in Psalm 68, in verse number 4, and I'm going to turn there and read that because it's so important. And I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Psalm 68, verse 4, it says, Sing unto God, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, J-A-H in the King James. And it's in all capital letters. And rejoice before him. Now this, we, we realize that the Hebrew did not have the J sound. So it's pronounced Yah. And it's the same name as Yahweh or Yah. So the writer in Psalm one, uh, the Psalm, the writer of Psalm 68 is saying, praise his name, which is Yah or Yahweh. And the word hallelujah, the word hallelujah is praise to Yah. Or hail to Yah. That's in the Old Testament in Psalm uh, 104, verses 33, 35. And it's dealing with the overthrow of the Lord's enemies. The first time that the word hallelujah is used in the Old Testament is talking about the overthrow of God's enemies. And then the first time that it's used in the New Testament in Psalm 19, or excuse me, Revelation 19, and verses 1 through 3, it's also dealing with the overthrow of God's enemies. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, honor, power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. In Psalm 104, it's talking about the overthrow of the enemies of God. Now, in Revelation 19, it's talking about the overthrow of Babylon, the overthrow of the great whore system. And both times, this is the, the first time in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament where the word hallelujah is used. It's hail to Yah or hail to the Lord. Praise the Lord for overthrowing his enemies. That's what it's talking about. That's the meaning of the word hallelujah. Now there's two dimensions of spirit. Two dimensions, our human spirit and the Holy Spirit. And I want to read our last verse of Scripture for today in the book of John, chapter number 4. We're all familiar with this passage of Scripture. In John, chapter 4, we all know that the Lord is speaking to the 
the woman at the well. And he said, The hour cometh, the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. This is what I want to leave with you today, my friends, saint of God. This is what I want to say to you. If we are going to worship the Father like Jesus said, we must worship Him in two realms, in spirit and in truth. That's in our human spirit, but I believe it goes deeper than that. I believe it goes into the Holy Spirit. We must worship the Lord in the Holy Spirit. And also, we must worship the Lord in truth. Why truth? Don't worship the Lord ignorantly. Worship the Lord knowing who He is. Worship the Lord knowing what He has done. You, we worship the Lord. We sing in the Spirit, Paul said, and we sing with our understanding. We know what we're praising the Lord about. We know what we're worshiping the Lord about. We praise the Lord for what He has done, what He is doing. But we worship the Lord for who He is. That goes even deeper than praise. We worship the Lord for who He is. And the Lord Jesus is telling this woman at the well, worship the Father in spirit and in truth, because that is true worship. I want to encourage each one of you to write to us and order this offer number five. Praise and worship, are they the same? or call the number that is on the screen, or you may uh, check out our website and may find that this brochure there. But I want to encourage each one of you to contact us so that we can be a blessing to you, that we can help bring you into a greater depth of understanding in worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Him, I urge you today to accept Him as your personal Savior. It's your only means of salvation, because Jesus is Lord. For any material offered on this program, please write or call for your copy today. May God bless you for your response and for being a part of this end-time ministry.